Hello students, in today's video I'm sharing a killing opening for white pieces against 1b6 by black, which is known as the Oven Defense. It doesn't matter if you start the game with d4 or e4, your opponent is always able to execute this defense and play the tricky move b6. It's not as bad as it may seem, and actually if black is playing solid lines, white's advantage is not going to be huge. However, most players play this opening to set up tricks and traps, which you will learn to avoid and get winning positions. First, we're taking over the middle with the move e4. Our opponent is going to attack the pawn on e4, and we're going to play the move bishop to d3. It's not only developing a piece, but also accelerates the castling side for the white pieces. Black plays e6 most of the time. They're ready to set up this annoying pin with the move bishop to b4, which will allow them to exert a little bit more pressure against e4. We're going to be playing c4 and take over the center completely. What we have right now over here is called the mobile center. It provides us with a lot of space and white can now develop the pieces to the best squares in the middle. Black cannot leave white with such center for too long and therefore they start attacking it right away. Let's take a look at f5. This move, it attempts to take advantage of the pin that exists along the diagonal. Later, we will also look what happens if black plays a couple of other moves as well. And the move that we're going to be playing here with white is quite shocking. We're going to actually play e takes f5. Well, yes, I understand. We're leaving the rook there completely trapped, but we're hoping to develop huge initiative with the check on h5. So, the correct move for black would be to play crazy move bishop to b4, after which white must play king f1. The idea of this move is simply to protect the pawn on g2, and then white has an advantage but not yet quote-unquote winning position. However, I think the most important line to know is what happens if they actually take the pawn on g2. Here we have queen h5 check. Our opponent is going to block the check with the pawn. Here we're going to play takes on g6. So the threat of whites over here is to push this pawn, which would land a discover check on the black's king, after which we can take on h8 and promote a pawn into a queen. For example, if they were to take our rook, we could push, the king has to flee, and we have a new queen and white is completely winning. Therefore, as we go back, after we took the pawn on g6, black's only move here is bishop to g7. Well, this move stops us from pushing the pawn further. We're going to take on h7 with the check. And the king is going to flee to the f8 square. Here, white can develop the initiative further with bishop to g5, attacking the queen. Our opponents are likely going to play knight f6 and attack our queen. And we're going to go back to the square h4 in order to keep the pin and exert more pressure against f6. Well, they take on h1, and I get it. We're around three points down. We just lost the rook. Why would we be playing this with white? Well, the idea is that black is completely lost because white could play knight to e2. We're going to play knight d2 or knight c3 and long castle. All of our pieces are going to be amazingly active. And we have so many tactical threats against the black's king that they simply cannot avoid losing that material in the long run. An example line would be black playing the move knight to c6. That's what masters played in this position. They're attacking the pawn on d4 in case we go knight f4, they could take it. And they're preparing the move pawn to e5. We are going to be playing knight to d2, after which they tried e5. And white is not in the rush to win back material right away. We're playing long castles. All of our army of ours is playing. We're also attacking the bishop on h1. E4 was tried in a practical game, but after a few moves, white's pieces are all over the place attacking the black's king. Black was happy to win the pawn back on h7 at last and get the rook into the game, but white is just too active. For example, king f7 was tried, and over here after rook d3 and coming to f3, just take a look at the white's pieces. White is just absolutely winning if you put this on the engine. Any move leads to like plus 5, plus 6 of advantage which means we're winning the game. Now, let's go back a little bit because Black has a couple of move order changes that could make it really tricky for you. And I couldn't finish the video without showing you those. Let's go back to this moment where Black played f5. So if they play f5, remember we take and everything works out seemingly for white. However, sometimes what they could do is land this check. 
And if one is not careful, for example, plays knight to c3, black plays f5, and he thinks that the same thing works again, they're wrong. Because when they give this check, that king will have a square on f8. Take a look. We're going to take on f5, which is a complete blunder. Then they're going to take on g2, just like in the previous line. And here after queen h5, they don't have to play g6 because bishop has moved away with the check. So they play king f8. We don't have that initiative developing. And we're losing the game because we're just going to simply lose the rook. So I have to be very careful about the check and understand that once they do that, we're just going to be playing the move king to f1. Or in this case, I recommend just bishop d2. I guess it's just much simpler. For example, <clears throat> if black is going to take on d2, now we can take back with the knight. And f5 is no longer dangerous. We could just simply play knight f3 because e4 is guarded enough and we're having a good game. One more line, which is not as tactical, that I would like to show you is knight to f6 played by black. Here, I already recommend the move knight to c3. Without f5 coming, I don't see a danger of this pin anymore as they're never going to be able to take advantage of the spin and take on g2 in this operation. For example, bishop to b4, white could play queen to c2. And white is very safe and has big advantage. The last trick not to fall for, of course, is after taking not take with the queen because you would simply lose the pawn on e4. So we're going to take back with the pawn and a couple of games have seen d6, f4, e5 by black. But white center is enormous. They simply cannot destroy it. And white has huge advantage. For example, knight bd7, castles. And I will say noise position for white. I wish you many, many victories. And perhaps you will be looking forward to your opponents playing b6 from now on. If you enjoyed the video, please consider hiring me as your personal online chess coach. That's my job for almost 10 years. My contacts are on the right. I will be waiting for your emails. Thank you for watching and see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.